Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am Danny Burke with Legion AVS. This is Steve Tortorici with Legion Films. Uh, and occasionally AVS. And occasionally AVS. Uh, this is the Legion AVS podcast, vodcast, where we talk about the events industry, the film industry, and everything in between the two, and how to be successful and navigate it and pitfalls and challenges and all the things. So today we wanted to talk about uh, having a production partner for you know, this is kind of continuing on the event planner and event manager role. Basically, we see this all the time where we get booked for a project, you know, 60 to 90 to 100 days out from the project when the project has been on the books, the venue has been booked for a year plus. Mm -hmm. And that this is just a, not a great way to do it uh, for for your AV vendor and your production partner, like you should be booking us significantly further out. Um, so that's what we want to talk about. Yeah. So, so you're saying, uh, navigating the, the whole road with our, our production partners rather than jumping in at the end to then figure it out. Right. Yeah. yeah. We don't want to come in, you know, cause honestly, like a production partner should be helping you with venue selection. Cause there are a ton of things, uh, about a venue that are going to affect your, your show, your program. And mm -hmm. if you are working with, you know, a AV company or production partner, they can help you navigate that stuff and say, Hey, you know, like sound in this room is going to be a challenge, or, you know, we're going to want to drape off these windows or whatever it is. There's, mm -hmm. a, you know, a ton of things. Hey, there's no power available in this space. So we're gonna have to bring in generators. Um, you know, just the, all of these things, you can get ahead of those costs and get ahead of like, by bringing in a production partner, you know, at the start of the project, you will save money overall. Because mm -hmm. even if you're gonna pay like a pre-production fee or something like that, you know, if you spend $10,000 on pre-production to have a production partner helping you, they're gonna save you, you know, 30 to $50,000 just in like costs that would happen otherwise. And in, in power fees, in rigging fees, in in contracts, you know, things like that. So like there, there's a lot of savings that you can have from bringing someone in early that should be it, it should be done it should be more of an industry standard and i think the reason it's not really an industry standard is because we've kind of gotten to this in-house av thing where it's a, you just say oh I'll, I'll just use the in-house um i'll just use you know encore um and they've done a good job of that but the problem is is a it's exorbitantly expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, I was looking at a, an Encore quote just earlier today and their price for an iMag camera package was $9,000. That's the price of a camera to buy. Mm -hmm. Like maybe not like a, a ridiculously nice broadcast camera, but honestly, like that's that's pretty, a mid-range broadcast camera. Yeah. Um, and they were discounting it by 80% to get it to, I think it was like, you know, it was like 1500 bucks or something. And that, that's like, just what a real rental would be. That's what a real yeah. rental is. Actual right? industry and rates, So yes. like actual industry rates are about 5% of purchase price. So like per day. And so like that, it was just like, I was just blown away by that. I was just like, that's literally the price of a, and same thing. You know, we see it a lot with TVs and stuff where they're charging you a few thousand dollars for a TV. And it's like, I mean, I, I was quoted by a house team. We were in a pinch and we had to get an extra giant flip chart notepad uh and easel and the quote for the easel was 150 dollars. an easel that you can buy for 15 dollars at a store um yeah. so that that kind of thing that that taking advantage of the the need is something that doesn't have to be necessary when you can plan around that and actually have all the your ducks in a row before you arrive on site um, instead of just asking for the last minute stuff and taking what's offered to you without any other option. Um, let, let's, uh, let's talk about like some of the, the venue hurdles that we've encountered that could have been avoided with us being involved earlier. I mean, I can think of one of, uh, a venue that didn't have a clean loading path to their second story event space, which when <clears throat> we were quoting, they were asking about staging and decking. We said, of course, of course, of course. What's the venue? And then when we found out that there's no elevator, then it adds additional staffing to now hand carry equipment up the stair piece by piece. It adds time to the load in. It just, 
threw a whole wrench in the gears when it came to that production schedule of something that should have been a roll in and be prepared and done in a half hour turned into a hour and a half, two hour thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, things like that happen all the time. You know, venue, like load in paths, um, again, power in a space. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, when we find out that, uh, oh, we want to do this massive LED wall, and then we get get a hold of the specs of the venue of like, this venue can't support that power-wise. Not only power-wise, floor-wise. We <laughs> floor did, a, we did a, an event where they wanted to do an 80-foot LED wall that was 80 by 20, and the floor couldn't support it. And, you know, luckily... <laughs> we were brought in early enough to talk to the venue and say, this is the plan. Can we get your ratings? And there, it was a hundred pounds per square foot and it just, it could not support the weight we were going to do. Um, and so we had to, to pivot and change the plan. Yeah. Um, so these are all things that, yeah, absolutely. Like I think uh, also people don't, I, I almost feel like AV has become like a dirty word and people also just don't really think about it. They think they're, they're, you know, event planners, have so much on their plates where they're, they're booking hotels, they're booking the travel, they're, they're figuring out the catering, they're doing all of the offsite mm-hmm. stuff. They're doing so much. That's like, I just, they're just like, I, I don't want to think about this. Yeah. This is a thing that's going to happen. If I like, if I just use in-house, it's going to be what it's going to be. It's going to suck or it's going to be okay. But like, mm-hmm. I'm probably gonna have to manage the crap out of it on site, but at least I don't have to deal with it right now yeah. where, and that can work. But what I would argue is that if you bring a partner in who can, we can take that off your plate anyway, mm-hmm. right? You can just, we can take that off your plate. Even if it's a venue that's like, you know, Encore got an exclusive and we can't be there. I still do projects where I just come in as a technical director and technical designer and like work mm-hmm. and to ensure that Encore is A, going to give us the price that we want um, and B, going to execute on what they've promised. So we make sure that we get the right things from them and then they execute properly. And if they don't, then we can do something about it. Um, yeah. And I, I think it, it it really comes down to it. It's not like a we are good, house AV bad, black and white scenario. It's it's really uh, what's, who and what are right for certain jobs. Like, you know, you, you wouldn't hire just anyone to watch your children. You'd hire someone qualified. So like when you're pushing like a event of that magnitude, like hundreds of thousands of dollars, sometimes millions of dollars across the finish line, are you trusting it with a stranger who has no buy-in with you and not a care in the world on if this works well and you come back next year? Or are you pushing it with someone who wants to work with you for two, three, 10 years on cultivating what this project is and having that, that level of engagement and buy-in and skin in the game to tie their success to your success um because that, that's the, the thing with with house av a lot of times you get their attention like maybe a week before because you're the next thing coming through the door and oh their docket just cleared and finally they can think about you but even at that point they're not thinking about how is your branding how's your messaging to the audience like what are your lighting cues doing to sell your brand or this part of the event and they're only thinking about do i show up or not and right. like that even the texts that come in like do they care about your messaging i can almost guarantee not or do they care about you really as a client at all right because mm-hmm. they're they're coming in the, the the text in particular right they're coming in to do another show they came in and did mm-hmm. you know three shows last week they're doing this show this week yeah. we don't have you know and i would i would agree like it's not about you know outside vendors good a in-house av bad i would say that what it is is you just don't know yeah. So you might get an amazing AV team um, in-house, but you also might not. Like mm-hmm. you might get a terrible AV team in-house. You just don't know. And so the what you can get by having a production partner, a long-term production partner, is the consistency and mm-hmm. the knowledge that you know you're, what you're getting. You know what you're getting. You, you, you've worked through it every step of the way. And rather than just kind of walking in and hoping and – or – you know, I've, I've seen event planners and event managers pull off miracles with garbage AV by just, you know, micromanaging <laughs> and managing the hell out of these people and like making them do these things. And like that is crazy stressful. And that's and, a full time job. And that's a full time job. And you got other things. <laughs> to be doing. It's a full time job. We're pretty good at. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's like it, it's not like a all one or the other. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I think events when are when they're properly staffed with a proper amount of forethought and planning 
they go the best. But obviously budgets don't always allow for that. So sometimes it does make sense to um, leave house AV to what they're best suited for, which is sometimes breakout rooms or, you know, audio for the cocktail reception or something along those lines where uh, it might not make as much sense budgetarily to have, you know, a, a, our one of our absolutely flawless A1s on it. But you might want to walk that line and decide for yourself. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people don't don't cross this bridge until they've had a bad experience. Yes, which happens a lot. So everyone's bound to have a bad experience at some point. Um, but then not knowing what their options are, like to bring in someone like you or like me to be the intermediary if they have already locked in their house staffing. Mm -hmm. um, but there is that line that you can walk and bring us in as part of your team to help guide your experience or someone in our same position. Having a good uh, AV and production partner can help you navigate where those lines lie of like, is this the best use of my funds to go towards here, towards this, or we have this type of budget. How can we maximize the success of our event with this budget? With this budget, yeah. yeah. Cause like, you know, you bring on any, any production partner, even if it's just in a management role, like if they're a good production partner, they will not bullshit you on like, hey, no, I don't think that's a good use of funds to, you know, we're not going to drop a nice line array at this cocktail hour for 50 people. It might be more appropriate to drive those funds this way up the production value here and then have what gets you across the finish line in a successful way there mm -hmm. and, and, and I would, figuring that out as you go. I would completely agree with that. Um, allocating your dollars in the right way. I, th I see that all the time. Um like, you know, big LED walls. You're going to spend a hundred to, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars on a big LED wall. Mm -hmm. So if you are not using that LED wall for, you know, every time people are in that room in a creative, interesting way, mm -hmm. you're wasting money. Like do something like LED walls are one of the most expensive pr products for an event, like per tile or per square foot, however you want to think about it. Like, and you can get amazing results with them. But if you're not using them the right way, you could get way more bang for your buck with lighting. You can mm. get, you know, you can get way more bang for your buck with projection if it's done well. Like you just gotta kind of know, right? Like LED is like the next new thing. It's hot. It's everybody's into it right now. But like if you're not gonna if you're just gonna have a giant LED wall and then do it, do some nine by just sixteen pips in it. Power like, points. <laughs> yeah. If you're just gonna do normal power, there's no point in doing that. Like mm -hmm. so having somebody who can help you navigate those things and you know spend your money wisely like that's mm -hmm. really what it comes down to is i don't want to just spend your money to spend your money i want to spend your money to create something awesome and get you the most value for that money because mm -hmm. like putting on events is expensive like a multi-day conference is typically going to run all in you know a million plus um for you say you're there for three days like your av bill is going to be you know i'd say minimum a hundred thousand dollars plus your hotels and travel i mean you all know this right so like if you're gonna spend a million dollars you should be allocating that money correctly and mm -hmm. you you don't have to be an expert in all of these things and again like a few thousand dollars of bringing on a production partner to help you with the pre-production and planning mm -hmm. is going to save you money and help you allocate that money in the best way possible yeah yeah and and having that that partner be mindful of of the the wallet the whole time because i mean just for the sake of signing a house AV contract, just to not have to think about it, like that that same contract you were talking about that we were looking over earlier, uh, they had what was it, six hundred dollars for three power strips and some some power cable. Right. Is that the best allocation of your funds? Probably not. Right. Would it be cheaper to probably rent some of that equipment or sub rent some equipment from an outside vendor and have, or hell, go buy it yourself or go buy it like, <laughs> and then own it, you know, <laughs> you know or, or buy it and leave it there. It's going to cost you $10 to buy a power strip. Yeah. I was going to say, you know how many power strips you can get for that $600? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> Enough for your entire staff to have a goodie bag after. Uh, but yeah, being mindful of, of those allocations. And like we kind of talked about it in, in one of the last episodes about like, you know, is the drape wall the right decision for this space? Is the LED wall the right decision for this space? And and what what speaks to your audience in the appropriate voice to to even show them that you're spending your money appropriately sometimes, depending on the client. Yeah. And like, you know, something that should, like you said, cost a hundred thousand dollars at 
normal rack rates if we're just throwing the care out the window and signing whatever contract is going to cost 300 or 400 or 500,000 and have implications across the rest of your event. So really bringing in a, a long-term partner, uh, you get kind of three things. One is buy-in, right? And it's like, we always say here, like your success is our success. Mm -hmm. So when you're successful, we're successful because we're, we're, we're tying our success to you. And like, we want you to have a great event. We want to do it year over year, time over time, you know, and it's not just, you know, where an in-house vendor is, you know, again, like, it's not even that they're bad. They're doing their best, but they got 12 shows this month and you're just the next one coming in the door. They can't, they can't give you the dedication that it needs, mm -hmm. right? They can't do it. And so like, that's the big one is you get the time and the dedication and like, you get the buy-in from your partner to do this with you. Mm -hmm. And then second, you get the, the time to do designs. And like, we are event professionals, like the in-house AV that's doing 12 events that month. Like we are also doing 12 events that month with clients and we're seeing things, we're doing things, but you're going to have a dedicated, you know, project manager who's focusing on your event, but he's doing, or she, they're doing a ton of other events and they're seeing cool things in the industry. They're seeing, you know, innovative ways to do things and they're going to bring those ideas. I would say AV companies as a whole are also in general, excellent event designers or like general session designers because we see it all the time and we're it's very mm -hmm. underutilized, you know, people bring in event designers and like, that's totally great. We work with a lot of great event designers, but you can also, if you don't have a budget for a designer, lean on your AV team. Say, hey, we want to do something cool and innovative. Like if you have a production partner, they're going to have, a, like we're excited to do fun, cool things. You know, like we're, mm -hmm. we got to do a show with lasers recently. Love that. It was super fun. Um, so ask your, if you have a long-term partner, you can ask them to, you know, how would you do this? How can we, how can we spice this up a little bit? How can we make it more interesting than just a, you know, standard general session? And it's an underutilized thing that AV companies uh, should be used for more. Um, yeah. And like, if, if you're already working with an AV vendor that you've had a good, healthy relationship working with on site, I mean, it's never a bad time to tap them and say, how do we make this more seamless? How do we work with you more? How do we avoid what happened? Anything that maybe went poorly last time or could, could leave room for growing on the next one or there's an appetite for something more exciting. Um, having those conversations early, um, having a debrief with those, those uh, managing partners and like guarantee you 99% of the time they're gonna say, Oh yeah, let's talk more. Let's, let's have a check-in like every quarter. And as we run up to this event, cause we know it's every fall um, to, to plan and, and make sure that we can, give it the thought that it deserves. Yeah, that's, I mean, post-mortem meetings and next time notes are so incredibly important. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you, 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 that's something you absolutely do not get if you are using a different vendor every time, right? Mm -hmm. If you're just relying on your venue to, to help you with your AV, like being able to say, hey, this didn't go well, what can we do to mitigate that next time? Like that's incredibly valuable. Mm -hmm. um, the last one I would say is just budgets, right? Like if I'm a long-term partner of yours, I'm gonna know what your budget is. I'm gonna do everything in my power to be within that budget and give you the most value for that budget. And if I'm thinking about, hey, I'm gonna work with you on this again next year, or I'm gonna work on this next event that's in six months, or I'm, you know, I'm, I'm focused on the relationship. So if, you know, hey, our budget got cut by 15% this year. Okay. Like let's figure out how to make that work and yeah. still have an awesome event, you know? And then hopefully, Hey, we got our budget bumped by 15% this year. Awesome. Let's yeah. do something. You know, I, I'm not trying to eke every dollar out of every, you know, out of every project because my goal is the long-term relationship. My goal is to have steady income for the company for long-term. And so you can, you know, there's just a lot more flexibility and, you know, ways to, to work within budgets mm -hmm. and, and, and help each other out essentially, right? Like I want long-term business. Like I love one-off events that we do them, but I'm way more interested in a long-term business contract and a long-term relationship where we can be successful together. So yeah. you can have a lot more flexibility around budgets and things like that. Ensuring success of investment, 
Not ROI, SOI. Let's coin that here. Success <laughs> of investment. Yeah. How successful was that event? Like a lot of events don't have a return on investment particularly. They're, they're, they do. It's just not. Yeah. It's an engagement uh, and and overall success and how, how it went for their audience. So I don't know. Just, just a thought. Takeaway. All right. Don't works. forget to like and subscribe and uh, throw those comments and questions at us. If you have any thoughts on anything that we've been talking about or any insight on what you've encountered, if you're on one side or the other, agree, disagree, or want us to tackle something in the next episode, shoot it in the comments section. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, so, that was my best impersonation um, of a podcast host. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I feel like this is a relatively quick episode, um, but just definitely something we've been seeing a lot uh, is kind of last minute bookings. We just got booked for a project that's got a three week lead time. That's insane. It's, it's a general session and four large breakouts, like, you know, 400 person breakouts with three weeks of planning. Like that's insane. Like we're doing it because it's a, relationship i want to build and say next year let's let's start talking about 2025 <laughs> because let's get through 2024 but 2025 you know it start let's talking about it the week after this let's one. start talking about it yeah <laughs> you know 11 months in advance it's rough for us to pull things together that quickly and it just doesn't make for the best experience if you can if you can be planning these things out further in advance let's do that hmm. so um thanks for listening appreciate you know our, our dedicated subscribers and uh, again would always love to know what topics we should tackle um, and what we should talk about so thanks for tuning in